Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jack Daly, the director of the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, and it's my privilege to welcome you here this morning for what is truly a special event. Thirty years ago, a new era began when the world's two space powers shook hands in space. The mission joined the Soviet spacecraft with the American Command Module to combine operations. The historic event is preserved here in Space Hall with the two spacecraft reunited to represent this continuing partnership. Today's program brings together the individuals who represented the United States and at that time the Soviet Union. They are here to discuss the Apollo-Soyuz test project with the chairman of our space department uh, and the panel includes Mr. Val uh, Valery Kukazov, General Alexei Leonov, <coughs> Dr. Roger Launius, the moderator for today's session, Mr. Vance Brand, and General Tom Stafford. There was a third member of the Apollo crew, the docking module pilot, Donald Slayton, also known as Deke. Deke Slayton passed away in 1993, but will be forever remembered for his pioneering work in space exploration. The Apollo-Soyuz project paved the way for a spirit of cooperation that continues to benefit the entire world. Today, Americans and Russians living and working together in space. It is now my privilege to introduce the Deputy Administrator for the National Aeronautics and Space Administrator, Administration, the Honorable Fred Gregory. Fred? <coughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and, and friends on the stage. It's a, it, it is an absolute privilege to be here uh, as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the, the docking of Apollo and Soyuz uh, on orbit. On behalf of Administrator Mike Griffin, I'm pleased to honor General Tom Stafford, Vance Brand, Alexei Leonov, uh, Valery Kubasov, uh, and, um, and all of their families who are here present today. It was 30 years ago, on July the 17th, that two spacecraft launched from different corners of this world and hooked up on orbit. When the Apollo-Soyuz mission took place, our president, Gerald Ford, said he was confident that the day was not far off when space mission made possible by this first joint effort it would be more or less commonplace. It took a while, but President Ford was right. From Apollo-Soyuz to Shuttle Mir, to the participation of our current core of astronauts and cosmonauts, including Sergei Krekulov, who is now presently on the International Space Station, we have, as Americans like to say, grown a mighty oak tree from the seeds planted 30 years ago. It has been my great pleasure to travel to Russia and Kazakhstan several times to wish our expedition crews to the International Space Station a good flight and to welcome them back to home. Now we'll have a message from the current expedition crew aboard the International Space Station. Greetings from the International Space Station. I'm John Phillips, NASA Flight Engineer for Expedition 11, along with my Russian crewmate, Sergei Kukulov, commander of this international mission. This month, we celebrate 30 years of international collaboration in space, a tradition that began during the Cold War with the world's first international human spaceflight. At a time of growing tension between the world's superpowers, the Apollo-Soyuz mission turned competition into cooperation. Initially designed to test the compatibility of rendezvous and docking systems for American and Soviet spacecraft to pave the way for future joint human flights, the success of Apollo-Soyuz demonstrated that all nations could work together to achieve a common goal. Today, we are looking at the results of that commitment to peacefully work together. American and Russian crew members are working side by side. 220 miles above the ground, along with our other international partners on this important research facility. 
While orbiting the Earth, we use the station as a proving ground to learn crucial information needed to extend humanity's reach back to the moon and eventually onto Mars and beyond as part of the vision for space exploration. So, from the International Space Station, Sergey and I want to thank the Apollo Soyuz crew for their determination and dedication. It is an honor to be here 30 years later to carry on the legacy of that important milestone as we look forward to the decades of cooperation to come. Good morning. I'm Roger Wanius. I'm the chair of the Division of Space History here at the museum. 30 years ago, a remarkable event took place. On the 15th through the 24th of July of 1975, two nations that had been locked in a desperate Cold War struggle for 25 years before that time took a joint venture into space. And the two crews associated with that incredible spaceflight adventure are here with us today. I am pleased to introduce to, to you all Alexei Leonov, the commander of the So I used mission that uh, flew in 1975. <coughs> of course, uh, he was also the first human to walk in space in 1965, a very important event overall. His uh, comrade on that particular mission, Valery Kubasov. <laughs> the two Russian cosmonauts that rendezvoused in orbit with an Apollo crew led by General Tom Stafford on the far end. General Stafford had been a veteran of Gemini, of Apollo, and of ASTP. And I might add, he has been a core figure in the international cooperative ventures in human spaceflight since the 1970s. In fact, he may not be willing to admit this, but his fingerprints are all over virtually every international activity that's taken place. And that's to the good. His uh, comrades on that particular mission was Vance Brand, <laughs> who flew ASTP as well as several shuttle missions. And not with us today, unfortunately, is Deke Slayton. Deke passed away in 1993. He was one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts. He was grounded for a number of years because of a, a medical condition, but he ran the astronaut office through the 1960s and was able to fly in space after many years of waiting on the Apollo-Soyuz test project. We have a brief video presentation about the history of the Apollo-Soyuz test project that we'd like to run at this point. We were in a position to open a crack in the door between East and West during the Cold War. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty, sounds good. Palomino, Mila, Alexei. Mid-July, 1975, an American Apollo spacecraft and a Soviet Soyuz spacecraft prepared to join in Earth orbit, 140 miles above the Atlantic near Portugal. During their two-day joint flight, astronauts and cosmonauts transferred between spacecraft. They conducted space experiments, and they tested a compatible rendezvous and docking system, evaluating its potential as the universal standard on future spacecraft for docking and rescue. The mission climaxed more than three years of planning and preparation, a time during which differences in language, in technology, in political creed were set aside in favor of the common goal. This was the mission that opened the door to international manned spaceflight, the mission that set the course for joint flights of the future. This was the mission of Apollo-Soyuz. should get together two superpowers in space, but it was kind of unique and, uh, that here each country had at least 10,000 nuclear weapons aimed at each other, but yet 
we would have a joint cooperation space. This was the peak of the Cold War. Both sides believe that the other side is the evil enemy. The mission was unique and uh, it was supported because I think the populations on each side had a desire for the Cold War to be over. But at that time, the relations were not very good between our countries, but that project made us work together. It was quite a, a, a symbolic effort to open the relationship between the two countries. Well, we'd trained together for two years. In fact, it was our side that insisted we have to start two years in advance. And the Soviets then said, no, of course, everything was, they say, Bolshoi secret. Everything was a big secret. Tom Stafford has the Oklahoman pronunciation. He's very hard to understand, and I think that even his own wife did not understand him very well sometimes. We had a lot of fun because everybody made mistakes in the other language and uh, in some cases it's uh, like learning a, uh, listening to a three-year-old uh, trying to get better in English. <laughs> uh, so we made mistakes and everybody got a lot of laughs out of that. We learned to understand each other and we spoke the language that we named R Rustin, that is Russian in Houston. And so eventually we were able to overcome the language barrier. Dick Slate was a wonderful person. He was one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts and due to a medical problem, uh, uh, was taken off a flight where he was supposed to fly the second orbital mission in the United States. And uh, then he was head of the astronaut group. He was my boss for many years. And he ended up, I was commander and he was on the crew with me. And he was a wonderful person and did a great job. And it was, he finally got a chance to fly in space. But it was really wonderful after we'd trained in the mock-ups, the simulators back and forth for two years, to finally, you know, they launched from Kazakhstan. Back in the world, and seven and a half hours later, when the orbit came across the Cape, we launched two days of phasing and catch-up maneuvers, and I went in to the final rendezvous and docking. Okay, copy. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the uh, TPI maneuver was indeed successful. Tom Stafford reported from Apollo that he was station keeping with Soyuz. Both control centers, Moscow and Houston, have given a go for docking. Soyuz, Apollo, I need you 5 and 5 That's what made it easy for us to communicate with our U.S. counterparts because we were professional, speaking the same professional language, and this helped us build a trust as well. Oh, please, don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three meters. Three meters. Three meters. One meter. Contact. Capture. Capture. Okay, go to unlock. Universe ready. I knocked on the hatch. I heard him knock back, and I said in Russian, "Kato Budata," like who's there? Like you know, 140 miles up. Who else could be there? On a show. Hawk Revive. You look free. Okay, the camera. Ah! Ah! Just the turn. Got it? Yeah, it'll, it'll stay open. 
It was really the handshake uh, which symbolized uh, potential lessening of tension in the Cold War and, and friendship. May our joint work in space serve for the benefit of all countries and peoples on the Earth. Alexei is a great artist, and during those two days, uh, he sketched in a black and white sketch two pictures of me, and he gave them to me. I have them very proudly framed in my house, and they'll be going into a museum. Before flight, I prepared stickers, labels for Stoli vodka, Moscow vodka, etc. I took containers with coffee, with borscht, and uh, applied those labels on those containers. And so when we sat down to eat in the vehicle, according to the Russian tradition, we must celebrate our first meeting. So they were very uncomfortable, but they went ahead and opened the containers and said, let's have a drink to our first meeting. And once they started drinking, they realized that this was borscht. That's what was in the containers, and everybody was disappointed, actually. After two days, you know, we docked and spent two days together, undocked, redocked again in the test, then finally undocked, and we slowly started drifting off our own way. We're about 30, 40 miles apart. We start receiving the signal from Apollo, and I listening to music, and I hear some women laughing, and I can hear some glasses clinking. I press the transmission button and ask Vance, what's going on? And they're saying, oh, we're having a party over here. We're done working, and so we're partying. Turns out that they recorded all this noise, all these sounds, while still on Earth, and then they played it back to pretend that they had a party. The friendship has lasted very dearly all these years. I consider General Alexei Leonov like a a brother to me, practically. He calls me and says, I have a great idea, but you have to help me. And so once he called me and he said that I want to have a Russian child. We got there, we there in September of uh, 2003, and uh, we uh, he took us to several orphanages, and so we found these two boys and spent several hours with them. And so he basically picked them out. Then later we had them over for a visit in Christmas of 03. So one day, Tom calls me again and says, I have a great idea, can you help me? And I say, yes, of course. And he says, I want to adopt both of them. When we did the Apollo Soyuz mission, I started 30 years ago. I never knew I'd have two new Russian sons out of it. And what we do today on the International Space Station and uh, the type of working groups we have and how we approach things is all based on what we worked out from Apollo Soyuz starting from scratch. Tell Professor Bushuyev it was a soft docking. Well done, Tom. It was a good show. They are looking forward now. So I'm, I'm rather proud of what the, the whole team accomplished. So that kind of opened the gate to go forward for international cooperation and exploration. Here's an endeavor. We have captured Zarya. Don't think it's all over. It's uh, just starting. Yeah, it's a good movie. Thank you, we're back. At this point, uh, Fred Gregory, who is the Deputy Administrator of NASA, was going to make a presentation to the uh, members of the ASTP crew. You know, it is a rare privilege for me to participate in a program like this. Uh, 
Each of these gentlemen behind me have been my heroes since I was very, very young. <laughs> I have the honor of making a presentation to each of them at this moment. Uh, about 31 years ago, a great artist, uh, Robert McCall, painted uh, a depiction of what a program such as the program that these gentlemen had. Uh, those not familiar with Robert McCall will see some of his works just inside the, the entrance to the Air and Space Museum. But I have the honor of presenting to these gentlemen um, a reproduction of the painting that he made in anticipation of this mission. And he made it 31 years ago. And also will be included, will be a mission patch uh, that was actually flown with these uh, gentlemen on the Apollo Soyuz mission. And so if I could, <coughs> and if you will allow me, I will be very familiar because I know them. Tom, yeah, a presentation to you. Vance? Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Alexei? Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> you as glass like me. <laughs> <laughs> We have one additional award, and that is a, a similar uh, presentation, and it will be made to our dear friend, our dear friend's family, uh, Donald Deke Slayton. Thank you very much, and congratulations. At this point, I would like to allow each of the members of the ASTP crews to make an opening comment uh, about their experiences and what it has meant. We'll start with Tom Stafford. Thank you. Well, it's certainly an honor and a pleasure to be here with the crew for this uh, historic 30-year uh, celebration. Thank General Daly, Director of the Museum, Don Lopez, Deputy Director of NASA for all their help and also for all the many friends that I see in the audience that have helped us here over the years. And it was a unique time. It was at the height of the Cold War. And at that time, each country had literally thousands of strategic nuclear weapons pointed at each other, plus probably a few thousand tactical weapons. But yet, in spite of all these two great superpowers, both on the land and the air and in space, having somewhat adversarial relationships, it was decided we would have a joint mission in space to prove to the world that the two countries should have a common goal and work together we for the betterment of mankind. So it was a, a very yes. unique experience of the four <coughs> missions I flew in space. And we got to know the uh, Soviet cosmonauts with their house many times and to work with them day after day. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. And they're practically part of the family to us. And the one thing I never knew that when I flew that mission at the height of the Cold War 30 years ago, it would eventually lead to me having two new sons that Joe Alexei Leonov picked out for me. So uh, it, it's really a great experience and it's a wonderful thing and I'm so glad it could lead into, as President Ford said, in the future further cooperation and today the International Space Station is going ahead right uh, there in a very effective manner. So it's wonderful to be here. Thank you all for the hospitality. Thank you. Vance, would you like to make a comment? Uh, yeah. I think Tom covered it all, but for the most part, uh, I would say that uh, 30 years ago now seems like uh, almost in another lifetime, yet when we uh, 
we get together, uh, it's as if uh, we've never uh, been apart as crews. Uh, through the years, uh, we, we started out, uh, you know, when we first uh, flew into Moscow and, and uh, they came to the United States, why uh, we'd all heard a lot of bad things about the other's uh, country and uh, it was really uh, almost uh, instantaneous, though, uh, our uh, uh, getting together and understanding each other. We were in the same business. We were uh, all dealing with uh, spacecraft. And uh, of course, Alexei and Valeri were very easy to get along with. And uh, uh, I think uh, from the very beginning, uh, any concerns that we had uh, went away. and. Uh, so through the years, uh, after a bonding on that mission where we did something very important together, uh, I think uh, it's been a continual bonding. We kind of uh, check once in a while to see uh, what kids and the others' families are doing, uh, what, what the Russian families are up to these days. We see them every couple of years, and so it's uh, just a great pleasure to get together. It's uh, tough brushing up on Russian again. Uh, I have about 30 years of no practice there, but uh, a little bit of that comes back. And uh, of course, they speak very good English. So anyway, it's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, I certainly appreciate, Bev and I appreciate uh, uh, what you're doing for us uh, here today and honoring us. Thank you. Alexei, would you like to make a comment? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. I visited many times uh, to this place. Thirty years before, we used uh, this spacecraft, but it is only mock-up, but our spacecraft looking like this very correct, very correct, Soyuz Apollo. We conducted, we, I mean, Tom, Ron, Dick Slayton, Valeria, and me. We conducted, we do our program perfectly. It was only beginning of our future cooperation. Only beginning. At the time, we were very young and very pretty, but now we are very pretty. <laughs> only. <laughs> I'm a pretty, pretty guy, pretty guy. <laughs> but I see in this hall, Dr. Nikagasian, he was very young like me. Uh, we worked together with him. In this day, we must remember very great American and Russian people. I mean, the American President Nixon, uh, uh, the academician Dr. Fletcher, and the Russian Nick Kasigin premier and the academician Keldish, but director of program Glenn Lani, at that time he was very, very young man, very famous, not only in the United States, he was very famous in the world, in the world. And the Frank, chief of pilot, academician Bushuev, he was director of space, Russian space program. Lyosha Yeliseev, Alexei Yeliseev. He was like American Frank. We had a very, very good team. We understand each other. It will be, uh, it was necessary, условия, condition. It was necessary condition of our cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure this is, it was real, only beginning of our future cooperation, not only in space, but in other fields. Uh, in this, I want to use this moment. I want to give a present to this museum, if it's possible. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Director Museum. Can you come up? Yeah. 
first of all, we did a film about our cooperation in space, 30 years. But 40 years of when I me conducted first time extra vehicle activities, I shot this film myself. Please. <laughs> and uh, this, uh, I know Mako, uh, this is a very good American artist, Bob McCall. Uh, I know him. Uh, the, please say hello to him, to this present. Uh, by the way, I helped to him uh, when he did this uh, painting. I said color, color. This is my version, Союза Пола. Space landscape. My friend uh, did a signature together with me. Uh, ah, it was a very small guy, pioneer, yes. At that time, I thinking about Tom Stafford. To, to Smithsonian Museum, the best space museum in the world. Kubasa, Brandt, Tom, and me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to your hospitality. Thank you. Valerie, would you like to make a comment? Oh. It's great pleasure for me to meet you here. I see in this hall some of people who took part in the Apollo Soyuz project. First Enka family, Mr. Nikagasyan, very strong doctor. We uh, fine, Bayatsa. Bayatsa. To be afraid. Fine. Yes, Bayatsa. We fight him. Bayatsa. Ah, we were afraid of him. Afraid of him. Medicine bandito. Однажды он пришел и сказал, что если у вас есть какие-нибудь больные зубы, мы вам их все сейчас вырвем. И мы, мы, мы очень ему благодарны, что он сохранил часть наших зубов до этого времени. Сегодня мы должны вспомнить, because my English is not okay like Mr. Leonov, that's why I prefer to speak in Russian language, because I'm a Russian man. <laughs> Сегодня мы должны вспомнить, помним с благодарностью директора проекта с русской стороны Бушуева. Uh, today we should remember the director of the project from the Russian side, Mr. Bushuyev. И с американской стороны доктор Лани, Лен Лани, руководителя полета Пит Франка, и Алексея Елисеева с арабской стороны. Работало несколько групп по разным направлениям в этом проекте. И прежде всего они должны были э, сделать наши корабли совместимыми. Our, uh, Нужно было создать новые стыковочные узлы docking, uh, и создать переходной модуль. И Это была сложная работа. Как-то после полета уже Глен Лани сказал, что он до конца так и не верит, что вот все это удалось сделать. Но я думаю, что нам все это удалось выполнить, потому что мы никогда не касались политики. 
I think we were able to succeed because we never uh, got into politics. Мы занимались только техникой. We just dealt with the technical issues. И самое сложное было для нас в этой подготовке, конечно, поездки в Хьюстон. And our trips to Houston were the most difficult thing for us during the preparation stage. Поскольку там всегда была ужасная жара и сильная влажность. Because it was always very hot and humid there. <laughs> Это очень непривычно для русских. It's, this climate is very unusual for Russians. У нас много снега зимой и довольно-таки холодно. We have lots of uh, snow in the winter and it is quite cold. И я думаю, что американцы, которые работали с нами, думали, что в России живут одни медведи и ходят только в медвежьих шубах. And they think that the Americans who started working with us originally thought that uh, there are just bears living in Russia and people who live there wear bear skins. Но, но когда они приехали, они увидели, что у нас живут тоже такие же люди. But when they came to Russia, they saw that we are just regular people. Russian народ очень гостеприимный и всегда испытывал хорошие чувства в отношении американского народа. Russian people are very hospitable, and they always liked American people. Нам удалось выполнить этот проект, и мы благодарны всем, кто в нем принимал участие. We succeeded in implementing this project, and we are very thankful to everybody who participated. И я думаю, что этот проект явился началом международного сотрудничества в космосе, которое происходит и сейчас. And it was the beginning of international cooperation in space, which is continuing now. Мы сейчас с экрана видели экипаж международной космической станции. We just saw the brief video from the International Space Station. На которой сейчас работает один американский астронавт и один русский космонавт. And there is an American astronaut and a Russian cosmonaut flying on the space station at the moment. Русский космонавт это Сергей Крикалев. Russian cosmonaut is Sergey Krikalev. Мы с ним соседи в Москве живем рядом. He is my neighbor in Moscow. И часто в свободное время даже играем вместе в теннис. And we frequently play tennis together. Я желаю вам всем хорошего здоровья. И я думаю, что доктор Никодисян тоже желает хорошего здоровья. I wish you all uh, great health, and I think uh, Dr. Nikogosian also wishes you all good health. And uh, I wish you all the best in everything. Gentlemen, I'd like to uh, start my uh, conversation with you all today by asking you where you were, what you were doing, and how you responded to this political decision to fly a joint mission between the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, why don't we start with Tom? <clears throat> well, when I heard it and knew that um, I was going to be the commander, my thoughts were, Payakali, let's go. <laughs> right on. That's Russian for let's go. <clears throat> but uh, I knew it would be a unique uh, experience because we'd all concentrated so much on the goal of landing on the moon and been deeply involved in that and the flights of Jimmy and Apollo leading up to it. But this would be a, a different experience. And so, uh, I was looking forward to it. And again, I didn't know what all the... Uh, the ramifications would be so as far dream. as working with them, but we said, look, they're professionals, we'll work it out, and we've got uh, the right faith, we'll go do it, and that's what happened. Okay. Alexei, how about yourself? What were you doing when you heard about the uh, project? What <laughs> Что вы делали, когда вы услышали об этом решении? Как вы прореагировали? Ты понял, что я нет? Как вы прореагировали? Что я делал? Был дома. А его с отхода. Какова была ваша реакция? I was in my home together with my wife. But it is 
Valeria and me were first crew of many orbital station salute. Uh, but first station salute uh, had emergency situation next to. Therefore, we was uh, during this preparation, we was uh, ready to all program in the world. Uh, when uh, our president and the president of United States uh, signature our agreement, uh, Valeria and me were number one to realize of this program. Therefore, they invite to us uh, to be crew in our joint pro such as life. Okay. Larry, would you like to make a comment on that? That's, uh, before uh, that decision, I uh, read uh, Selkovsky book about uh, international flight in space. Uh, Tsiolkovsky wanted to have uh, international crew, international flights. And uh, when I hear about uh, this uh, decision between uh, Russian and American uh, governments, I was very happy because uh, every cosmonaut uh, wanted that time to uh, be in this crew. It's a very happy decision for me. Uh, я, когда я услышал об этом решении, я был дома, и оно явилось для меня большой неожиданностью. I, I was home when I heard of this decision, and it was a big surprise to me. Okay. Vance, would you like to comment on it? Where were you? What were you doing? How did you react? Uh, I don't know as I uh, remember the exact uh, instant uh, that I knew that the mission was possible. I was, uh, I had come off a backup assignment on Apollo 15 and was, was on a backup assignment on Skylab. And uh, at some point uh, we had uh, Soviets, uh, cosmonauts coming to Houston to, uh, for talks and so forth. Tom had done a lot of precursor work. I was still focusing on other missions. Uh, <coughs> when they uh, came, I thought it uh, uh, was very uh, interesting uh, listening to them, talking with them. And I thought, well, this would really be a great mission to be on. So uh, I bought some uh, Russian lessons and was going out on Saturday mornings uh, taking Russian lessons. And uh, eventually the day came that uh, <coughs> Al Shepard gave me a call and uh, said I'd be on the mission, so I was really happy. Okay. All right. What surprised you the most when you began to work with the other nation uh, in the Apollo-Soyuz test project? And how did you all relate with each other in the various technical and cultural issues that you had to work through? On the, on the project. Uh, Tom, would you like to respond? Well, the ground rules were to start with that each crew would speak in their own language and the other crew would understand. But after about six months, it became obvious that this just was not working too well. So one night at a vecherinka, which means small party, you know, little vodka, little cognac, and all that, talking with the backup. Uh, commander there, Flipchenko, we started working it out, not had a few vodkas, <laughs> and we just, we, it was like ESP it came to both of us at the same time, look, I'll speak Russian to you, you speak English to me, and let's try that, and then later we spoke with Alexei on this, and uh, started working, and uh, so then that's how we started then going, because then once we started to speak Russian to them, and then they spoke English to us, started to communicate. And I'd also like to point out somebody gave us so much help is Dr. Anatole Forestenko, our chief Russian professor, who uh, helped me work out with my Oki accent to uh, speak Russian there, Dr. Forestenko. And of course, there's 
we had the back up there too with uh, Dr. Arlen and Kogosian who could speak Russian, but uh, that's, that's how, to, to me, the most difficult part was, was not the individuals or, or the, way, the way the culture, the main thing was the language. And we started so they could understand. Would you like to? Uh, I knew Tom Stafford uh, three years before. Uh, when we have uh, very bad days in our country, when our backup crew dead, uh, Tom Stafford visited our country himself. Uh, it was his decision. Uh, Commander of Air Force said, Alexei, you must be together with this uh, general, American astronaut, during these three days. I thought, why? I don't know, but you must be together with him. Okay, <clears throat> during three days, uh, every hour I was together with Tom. But when I have, uh, when I read the decision about crew, I read the Tom Stafford, Commander Apollo, Say Alexei Leonov, Commander of Soyuz. We are going to work together, together. It is very big symbolic for me. But the uh, one very important moment in 1945, Russian and American soldier shoot a hand on the Elba River. Elba River. Uh, our people knows about this action. Everybody, children and the uh, pa, grandpa. Uh, but according to our program, we are going to shook a hand above Moscow in radio zone. I don't know how Valery me did it, but we opened the hatch and shook a hand. 30 years later, above Elba River. It is uh, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, but uh, Moscow, when we have a radio uh, session, uh, Alexei Yeliseev asked me, are you ready to open hatch? Uh, please, let's begin to our program. We said, sorry, but Tom Stafford inside of our spacecraft. <laughs> what are you doing? We are drinking borscht. <laughs> it, it was very big symbolic. Yes, yes. Larry, would you like to, uh, to comment on that? What were the most interesting surprises? Меня очень приятно удивило то, что американские астронавты оказались очень подготовленными людьми для космического полета. I was very pleasantly surprised when I uh, realized that uh, American uh, astronauts were very well technically prepared. Они были настоящими профессионалами. They were real professionals. Ну, а если так, в шутку немножко чего удивило, то, что они у себя дома никогда не едят борщ. А русский народ не может жить без борща. Мы любим кашу, а американские астронавты любят стейк. But not well done, steak. <laughs> Middle done. Vance, do you have a, a comment on that? What uh, surprised you most? Yeah. Uh, one thing that surprised me a lot was the fact that uh, even though both sides had heard that the other side uh, was very uh, staunch or, or very uh, inflexible uh, uh, and dealing with foreigners and that sort of thing. Uh, I was surprised with the compromises we made. We, uh, for example, uh, well, we made compromises, but uh, the other side made compromises too. The Soviets brought, on orbit, brought the cabin pressure uh, of their spacecraft from uh, 
14 PSI sea level pressure down to uh, 10. Well, we had pure oxygen in our spacecraft at 5 PSI, so that made uh, it less of a job to uh, uh, actually at the interface between the spacecraft to uh, uh, design an airlock that we could go through. And uh, there were a lot of examples of compromises. Uh, I think uh, another surprise was how well our system worked for working together. Like, uh, well, it's become a model that's used even today. We had working groups and a uh, co-chairman. Uh, we had co-chairman with a uh, Soviet uh, leader on uh, working together with an American leader. And uh, that seemed to work great. And one, one other thing I think uh, was the fact that, well, something that made that work and uh, was a little bit of, su of a surprise was the, uh, how the top support was so good on each side. That is, the national leaders uh, were for this. They sort of, I believe, said, let's make it work. And then everything just flowed down. It, it, uh, it allowed uh, the Soviets uh, to be more comfortable working Questions for us audience. and us more comfortable working for them. So uh, things like this, uh, or these, were uh, surprises. Okay, thank you very much. We would like to uh, invite people from the audience to uh, ask questions. Uh, we have a mic that is circulating. If you'd raise your hand, uh, we will come to you. And, uh, and you may ask these gentlemen a question. Here's uh, over here. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, where do you hope to see our space program in the next 30 years? Would uh, any one of you prefer to tackle that, Tom? Well, having been involved a little bit in some of the studies and planning on it, um, naturally, to complete the, um, the International Space Station that's going on now and give us the background for further exploration and then returning to the moon, and uh, eventually an expedition to Mars, as uh, President Bush has outlined in the uh, exploration vision for the country to focus our research, our development, and also, as he outlined, the, and we, we did before, it'd be international in, re, in a total effort, just like the International Space Station is going on. So that's what I would envision now. What date, I can't put exactly. We have some milestones where it would, should be accomplished by a date, but uh, you know exactly if it's been before or but after, I don't know. But, but that's what I think is feasible right now and where it should go. Would uh, anyone else? Yes. Я уверен, что все полеты будущие будут интернациональны. Через 30 лет полеты на Луну будут такими же обычными космическими, как и сейчас. Возможно, мы высадимся, интернациональный экипаж высадится на поверхность Марса. И, несомненно, помимо... Америки, России, Китая, многие страны, такие как Англия, Германия, ну, может быть, Евросоюз, Бразилия, будут иметь свои космические летательные аппараты, пилотируемые. Но база будет все равно международная. Uh, and not only uh, United States, Russia, and China would have their own manned vehicles, but also such countries as Great Britain, Germany, uh, European Union, and Brazil. But the foundation would always be international. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wish to make a comment on that? Are there other, are there other questions from the audience? Oh, young men. 
啊。<laughs> Mr. Stafford, when you took off, where did you t take off? Where, where did we take off? Where did you take off? Well, <coughs> we launched from uh, the Kennedy Space Center Complex uh, 39B. In fact, that's where the shuttle's on the pad right now, ready to go. But first, uh, Alexei and Valeri launched from Kazakhstan and back to Noor, and seven and a half hours later, when their orbit came across the uh, Cape, we had a five-minute launch window. We launched, then for two days we did catch-up maneuvers, and then we rendezvoused and docked at the end of two days. But we launched from the Cape, and if you go down there to the uh, to Kennedy Space Center, if your father will take you down there, you'll see the. Uh, spacecraft that Vance and I flew in along with Deke there and spent uh, uh, nine days in that and Valeri and uh, Alexei visited that. So there's a lot of great educationalists down there at the Kennedy Space Center besides the museum. But this is what it looked like when we were in space. And this, In fact, this is our actual backup spacecraft and backup docking module that you see. Okay. Uh, for, there's one more question here. I real Don. Okay. No, I realize that uh, everything you've done has been tremendous, and I just want to know if there are any family members that you could point out so we could recognize because they they probably contributed and dedicated themselves and were part of what you were doing. Anybody in, in here that you might want to recognize? Are there family members you wish to recognize? Uh, yeah. Please okay. stand up. And <laughs> this, this is, is the wife, wife of that. Vanya Brandt. <laughs> this is my wife, Vitlana. It's uh, my son, Dmitry. <laughs> the name is Vanya. Beverly. Vanya wife. <laughs> okay. Mo, uh, my son, Dmitry, he was four years old when he was on the Soyuz Apollo. My son, Dmitry, was four years old when I flew on и мы когда вернулись из полета то они нас встречали э, в аэропорту на чкаловской mm -hmm. we flight, in там было много телевидения и мы должны были перед телевизионными камерами пройти вместе с семьями and we had to walk with our families in front of the TV crews and cameras. И он не хотел мне подать руку тогда. And he did not want me to hold his hand at the moment. И я, когда это закончил церемония, спрашиваю его, почему ты не дал руку? So after the ceremony was over, I asked him, why wouldn't you let me hold your hand? А он мне говорит, а почему ты мне не привез ни игрушек, ни жевательной резинки? And he said, why haven't you brought me back any toys or chewing gum? Я говорю, так ты знаешь, где я был? So I said, do you know where I've been? Он говорит, где ты был? Я and говорю, я был в космосе. And they said, I flew in space. А что в космосе нет ни игрушек, ни жевательной резинки? And he said, don't they have toys and chewing gum in space? А дело в том, что когда мы ездили в Хьюстон на тренировке, всегда возвращаясь, нужно было провести какие-то игрушки. Training, и у него понятие космоса было тогда, что это как в Хьюстоне. So mind, Houston. Сейчас он уже передумал, он после окончания Московского института авиационного работал в космическом бюро энергия. Uh, he graduated from the Moscow uh, Air and Space Institute and then worked at the Energy Space Bureau. Uh, космическое бюро энергия создавало все космические корабли российские. Energy и, Bureau designed all of the Russian и, space ships. И, и 
орбитальные станции Салют, Мир и международные космические Thank you all for coming here today. We have to draw this to a close now, but I would like to uh, all of us recognize 30 years ago the great accomplishment of beginning to do cooperative human space flight, something that has been continued right up to the present. And I would like for us all to thank Tom Stafford, Vance Brand, Alexei Leonov, and Valerie Kabasov. Thank you all for what you've done. Low these many years. Thank you. That concludes our program. Yeah, they want you to stay here for a moment for photographs. But I will exit since they don't want my picture. Oh. <laughs> so, okay.